Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. With a nod to LGR, we got some industrial oddware. Check this out. What could it be? Well, I'll tell you, whatever the fuck it is, it is the smartest thing I've ever seen. Brilliant. We're going to have a look at it. So, it's got some dip switches and an LED. It's kind of, it's plastique. Looks like it's got a gland on it. And it's right full of red goo. It's an industrial automatic greaser. A throwaway item. These are like a hundred bucks, which sounds a lot to you and I, but when you consider sending a mill wrong up a ladder, you know, 200 feet in order to grease a bearing, it, uh, it starts to get cheap in a real hurry. But the question is, hey, there's no wars. How does this thing chooch? It's fucking brilliant. In my younger days, I went out to an industrial site and uh, on a warranty claim, a big gearbox winch system. And uh, I went and the, the whole thing had completely grenaded. So I took a, a, so an oil sample uh, and the oil was spotless. So I thought, well, that's, that's interesting. I mean, you know, normally these things die from neglect and abuse, but it's got oil in it. Everything's clean all around it. What, you know, so that's mill writing 101. First thing you do when something blows up, put oil in it. Now this is interesting. I just cracked this and it was under suction. Must have been because of temperature change. This came out of a hot location. It's been sitting uh, in a pile beside the healing bench here for nigh on a year. Yeah. And so it goes. But the grease, this Shell Gaddis SV something something, they sent it. It smells like, it's got a fruity smell to it. And you'll find, uh, I think you'll start to find out more and more as they try and sell stuff. They'll, I mean, they'll put different coloring in it. They'll, they'll make it smell like something you can eat uh, just to sell more of the stuff. Okay, there's the gland off. Now look at that. You see that? Bellows. It's quite pressurized. So what happens is the grease goes in here. There's a piston. And then this fills with gas. And then pushes the grease out in order to dose whatever gear or bearing or whatever needs dosing and it's done on an electronic timer so there must be a, a a gas receptacle in here right well there is of sorts but just wait and see okay so there's two little batteries so we got three volts and uh, trying to keep the keep the moisture out for interfering with the pixies Let's leave the extendo cock section out for now. I don't know if you picked up on my subtle hint, but that's really interesting. Let's have a look at the PCB board. Ah! Fuck. Did you see that? The thing jumped right out and bit me. I'm afraid, gentlemen, someone's gonna have to call the ambulance right under the nail bed, too. Gah! Oh, and this is, hey, this is really cool because there's no silicon on there to speak of. There's no brain box or anything. What they're doing is they're just controlling the amount of current that goes to wherever it goes via these resistors. So from the battery through these um, current limiting resistors and they get selected on this switch. Huh? Does that give you a hint? Some interesting stuff going on there. And then just to make it doubly interesting, this LC, or LED rather blinks. It's thus blinking lighting. And the way it does that is with this capacitor and some sort of timer circuit here. But it's timed just through, uh, you know, the gate of this MOSFET getting charged up, firing, dropping off. So there's got to be a Zener diode in here 
as well as this capacitor. That in and of itself is interesting because it's a completely microcontroller free solution to a, a dosing timer. Can I hear that? That was pressurized. Here's the bottom side of that actuator. There we go, that actuator was just glued to this. And in here, it's some sort of weird material. It's essentially a diffuser plate holds in a wet sponge. Probably shouldn't touch that since I don't know what the hell it is. So if you have a look at this, we can see that it's conducting here on the ohm scale. Well, it's hunting, but we need a better uh, DMM. This is actually an electrode, a carbon electrode. Now you would think, okay, well, they put water in there, salty water in there. And then they'd get hydrogen and oxygen through electrolysis uh, in an industrial environment. A little bit dangerous to have a whole thing full of <laughs> flammable gas, explosive gas. So I'm going to go with probably some other kind of noxious chemical. And we give it a sniff. And it reeks of cat piss. Ergo, urea. Now the interesting thing is off the cathode, you're still going to get H2 hydrogen gas, highly flammable. However, off the anode, you're going to get um, nitrogens. You're going to get just straight nitrogen, N2. You get uh, nitrogen and three hydrogens, and you'll get some CO2 as well, potentially. Those are all fairly inert. So even though you have the hydrogen gas in there, it's enclosed and it's not flammable. It's not going to blow up on you. And that is how very, very simple way to automate lubricating your bearings. It's brilliant. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a vise.